Hello, it's Josh from Server Pro here, and today we will be going over how to configure DNS for your server. Before we can configure DNS for our server, it's important that we first understand what DNS is and what role it actually plays. The domain name system, also known as DNS, is the magic system that enables us to access services on the internet using words rather than by typing in IP addresses. Computers on the internet talk to each other using internet protocol addresses or IP addresses for short. IP addresses identify where a computer is located and help to guide information travelling between computers. While it's easy for computers to communicate using long strings of numbers, it's not quite as easy for us humans. That's where DNS comes in. Think about where you live. Sure, you could just give someone longitude and latitude coordinates so that they can locate you, but that's not really very helpful. Instead, you'd give them your home address. DNS works in the same way. You could visit our website by typing in 54.37.169.216, but who can remember that? It's much easier to just type in server.pro. Now that we know what DNS is, let's actually set it up. In this example, we'll be setting up DNS such that we can connect to two Minecraft servers using a host name of our choice, rather than by using their IP addresses. First things first, you're going to need a domain name. These are relatively inexpensive, usually costing $8 to $10 per year, and can be purchased from a variety of different companies called registrars. In this case, I've gone ahead and purchased the domain serverproteam.com from Namecheap, but you could use any registrar like GoDaddy123Reg or Google Domains. We've left a link down to a few to choose from in the description. You'll also need to create an account with Cloudflare, who are a fantastic free DNS provider. To do this, click the link in the description. Now that we've got a domain name and an account over at Cloudflare, we need to change our name servers to those provided by Cloudflare. Firstly, we need to add the domain that we just purchased to our Cloudflare account. Let's head over to cloudflare.com and log in. Then click the Add a Site button, enter your domain, select the free plan, and click Continue. If you already have some DNS records at your old provider, now is a chance for you to add them if you want to, otherwise just click Continue. Don't worry if you get this Add Records Later dialog, just click Confirm. Next, we need to point our domain to Cloudflare's name servers as instructed. Name servers are the computers that our DNS records are hosted on. Follow the instructions displayed on screen, as these will slightly differ depending on your registrar. If you've bought a domain through Namecheap, however, you can follow these steps. Log into your Namecheap account, then navigate to your domain list. Find your domain and click Manage. On the screen it appears, enter the name servers that Cloudflare has assigned to us in the name servers section. Make sure that this is set to Custom DNS. Once you've done that, click the green tick to save your changes, then head back over to Cloudflare and click the Done Check Name Servers button. Lastly, click Finish Later. Unfortunately, now you're just going to have to play the waiting game. Due to a process called DNS propagation, the changes that you've just made can take several hours to take effect, but it's usually completed in just minutes. You'll receive an email shortly when it's done. As you can see, I've just had an email stating that I've activated our domain. Now we can move on to the next step, which will be setting up our DNS records. So, now we've got to the fun part, which is setting up our records. Head over to the DNS tab in Cloudflare, and you'll be presented with a screen that looks something like this. Don't be intimidated, it's nowhere near as complicated as it seems. The main section that we're going to be dealing with is this table, which displays a list of all of our DNS records. First of all, we need to decide on a naming structure for our DNS. If you've got one Minecraft server, or perhaps a bungee cord network, you might want to set up something like play.yourserver.com. But in my case, I want to point to two separate servers, a Java Edition server and a Bedrock Edition server. I'm therefore going to be setting up java.serverproteam.com and bedrock.serverproteam.com, but you can choose whatever you like. Namecheap has written a great article covering how to set up DNS for your Minecraft server, so we've linked that in the description. It's worth checking your registrar's support pages as they may have the same. First of all, head over to your server pro server, whether it's a VPS or a game server, and find its IP address. For both VPSs and game servers, it's listed on your server's dashboard page. Note that down along with any ports so you can refer to them later. In this example, I've got a 6GB VPS 
which is running two services, a Minecraft Java Edition server and a Minecraft Bedrock Edition server. The Java Edition server is running on the port 25565 and the Bedrock server is running on port 19132. These are the default ports for Minecraft servers. To learn how to set up a Minecraft server on your VPS, click the i or the link in the description. Head over to Cloudflare, click Add Record and select A under Type. In this step, we're making sure that java.serverprotein.com and bedrock.serverprotein.com resolve to our server's IP address. Type the first part of the hostname in under name, in this case Java, and then paste in the server's IP address and the IPv4 address. Make sure that the cloud icon on the proxy status is grey, not orange, which you can toggle by clicking on it. Then, click Save. Do the same for any other hosts, in this case, Bedrock. Now the Java and Bedrock subdomains point to our server's IP, we need to state which ports to connect to. If you're using the default ports, you don't necessarily need to do this, but it won't do any harm. If you're not sure if you need to or not, go ahead and follow these steps. Add another record, but this time select SRV or service record under type. We've got a few more options this time, but don't panic, it's still pretty simple. Under name, enter whatever you want people to connect to. It doesn't need to be the same as your A record, but just to keep things organised, it probably makes sense if it is. I'm going to enter Java. Remember, it's just the bit before your domain name, not the entire host name. Under service, enter whatever you like, but make sure that it starts with an underscore. In this case, it makes sense to use Java as the service name, so I'm going to enter underscore Java. Make sure TCP is selected on the protocol and leave the time to live or TTL as auto. Set a priority of zero and a weight of five, then enter the ports that you noted down earlier. Lastly, enter in the A record that we created earlier under target, but make sure that this time you include the full record, in this case, java.serverprotein.com, not just Java, otherwise it's not gonna work. Click save and the record will be created. Now, once again, do the same for any other servers that you might own. Remember that due to DNS propagation, it might take some time for these records to come into effect, so don't worry if they don't work immediately. If you want to check the propagation status of these records, you could use a service like whatsmydns.net or dig if you're on macOS or Linux. As you can see, these records have already propagated for me, so we should now be able to connect to our server. Go ahead and open up Minecraft, click multiplayer, and add your server using your new custom hostname. Once you've done that, click join server and you'll be connected. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe and enable notifications so you never miss a video from Server Pro. Make sure to also leave a comment down below telling us what videos you'd like to see from us in the future. Thank you for watching, I've been Josh, cheers.